Let's all rise as we stand to welcome the bride and the father. On this joyous day where we watch two paths come together and intersect with one, who is it that will give this woman away to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Having made your entrance with such focus, I want you to take a moment and look at the crowd before you. All your family and friends that have gathered to celebrate with you. And as we begin this wonderful ceremony, let's bow our heads together and have a moment of prayer. Lord, it is with great joy that we celebrate today the gift that you have given us in marriage. With this area filled full of family and friends showing their love and support for Matt and Rachel, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for bringing their paths together, for weaving their hearts together as one. And now, knowing that you are here today as a witness to the promises and commitments that will be made, we thank you. And Lord, May you be honored and glorified today and in all the days to come in Matt and Rachel as husband and wife. We thank you. These things we ask in your precious name. Amen. Well, guys, the big day is here. There's a lot of preparation that goes into a day like today. And what many of you don't know is that for many months prior to this day, Matt and Rachel have been putting in necessary work to plan for the days to come. They have sought the Lord together, sought His Word together to prepare their hearts and minds for the journey that is marriage. And a great journey it is. And now here before your family and friends, I'm going to ask you to state your intent publicly. And so, Matthew Robert King, do you take Rachel Allen Brew to be your wedded wife, to live together according to God's perfect and holy design for marriage? Will you love her unconditionally, comfort her at all times, honor her above all others, and care for her, whether it be in sickness or in health? Will you accept the exclusivity of this relationship by forsaking all others and giving yourself heart, body, and soul only unto her, so long as you both shall live? If you promise to do these things before God and these witnesses, signify by saying, I do. I do. Rachel Allen Grew, do you take Matthew Robert King to be your wedded husband, to live together according to God's perfect and holy design for marriage? Will you love him unconditionally, comfort him at all times, honor him above all others, and care for him whether it be in sickness or in health? Will you too accept the exclusivity of this relationship by forsaking all others and giving yourself heart, body, and soul only unto him, so long as you both shall live. If you promise to do these things before God and these witnesses, 
signify by saying, I do. I do. Madam Rachel, you know over the previous months we've discussed a lot of things, and I can only prepare you for so much. There's going to be excitements and joys. There's going to be times of strengthening in your marriage. And that's what those times will be important for, is to build this bond that you have with one another, stronger and stronger. And so today, I know many of your family and friends are going to have so many words of encouragement to say to you, but today I've got a unique opportunity to say a few words to you myself. And so here I want to offer you some encouragements from God's Word as you embark on this journey as husband and wife. First of all, let me encourage you to grow in trusting God together together. Marriage is God's plan. Marriage is God's plan. And his word says that you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your steps. The future is always a dream to all of us. But I know the one and you know the one who holds the future. And allow him to direct your steps as you grow in together to trust him more and more. Secondly, let me encourage you to surround yourself with people who will be cheerleaders of your marriage. That will support you. That will cheer you on. Hebrews 4.13 says that marriage should be honored by all. <clears throat> and whenever I look at this room of family and friends, here's a good place to start. But in the days to come, make sure you hold tight those who will encourage you and challenge you to grow as a husband, to grow as a wife. Surround yourself with those who will honor you the privilege and the sanctity of marriage. Thirdly, let me encourage you to remember that you are God's gift to one another. Whenever we hear how God created the universe and how he created <coughs> mankind, there was only one thing that ever, he ever said that was not good, and that was whenever man was alone. And so God formed Eve out of Adam and brought her to him. You think about the tradition that we just observed here where the father brought the bride to the groom. Where did that come from? That came from way back whenever God brought Eve to Adam. God knew it wasn't good for Adam to be alone. He hasn't created us to be alone. And the fact that you have joined together today, that he has brought your paths together, is a sign and a signal that God has blessed you with one who will be your equal, your partner, your support, your encourager, and the one that will challenge you the most. You are God's blessing to one another. Don't forget that. Thirdly, let me encourage you, fourthly, I apologize, not to set unreasonable expectations for one another. The Bible says in Colossians 3.13 that we should make allowance for each other's faults. As perfect as today is, we're not perfect people. We strive to do our best. We strive to honor one another and to make one another happy at all times. But just as we know we're not perfect ourselves, we've got to make sure we remember that the one we're saying I do to and committing our lives to, they're not perfect either. So make room for forgiveness because forgiveness will strengthen your marriage. Fifthly, let me encourage you that your marriage is bigger than you are. There's more to this than just the I do's. Jesus said that marriage is a picture of his love for all of us. He calls us his church. And so as you go forth in these days and you show your love for one another, you grow in your love for one another, you are being an illustration of the bigger picture of Jesus' love for you and all who will observe your relationship. Finally, let me encourage you to never be afraid. 1 John 4.18 says, Perfect love drives out fear. And while we know that our love struggles in perfection, we know that His love doesn't. And because He has loved you with a perfect love, there is no reason for fear. So go. Strive. Rejoice. Because this is a good gift for you. So those are my encouragements for you. Let me pray for you. Jesus, again, we thank you. I thank you for the work and the hours and the prayer and the time that Matt and Rachel has committed to understanding your design, your plan, 
your future for their lives together. together. And Lord, I thank you for having the opportunity to encourage them with your word. For your word is true. Your word frees us from any confusion that may come from the world. And so, Lord, I just ask your blessing upon them now. And in the days to come, may their marriage shine bright as a symbol of your love for us. These things we ask in your precious name. Amen. The next word is going to be words of covenant. These are words of promises. These are your vows. And so I'm going to ask you to repeat after me in small sentences as you look one another in the eye and make your promise before your spouse, before your family, before your friends, and before the Lord who is here with us today. So first, to you, Matthew Robert King, repeat after me. I, Matthew Robert King, I, Matthew Robert King, take you, Rachel Allen Grew, take you, Rachel Allen Grew, to be my wedded wife, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold, to have and to hold, from this day forward, from this day forward, for better or for worse, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish, till death do us part, till death do us part. According to God's holy plan. According to God's holy plan. This is my vow to you. This is my vow to you. In the same way, Rachel, repeat after me. I, Rachel Allen Grew. I, Rachel Allen Grew. Take you, Matthew Robert King. Take you, Matthew Robert King. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy plan. According to God's holy plan. This is my vow to you. This is my vow to you. The couple today has chosen to seal their vow with rings that they will exchange with one another. So if you will receive your rings. The rings are very symbolic in and of themselves when you think about the very nature in which they are made. They are of the finest metals, the purest metals, which is symbolic of the purity of the marriage relationship. The finest metals are symbolic of God's finest plan for us as his children. The circle is to remind us of the endless love, a love that you are committed to one another today that is to never cease. And at this time, I want to ask you to exchange rings as Matthew, you take Rachel's ring. And as you place it on the ring finger of her left hand and look her in the eyes and repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a token of my love. As a token of my love. And a seal of my vow. And a seal of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. The Son. The Son. And the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the same way, Rachel, take Matt's ring, and as you place it on the ring finger of his left hand, repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a token of my love. As a token of my love. And a seal of my vow. And a seal of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. The Son. The Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Just for the same time. 
sand has become a sign of not only the blending of two lives, but the coming together of two families. The family, we're certainly thankful for you and your support and love for Matt and Rachel and the important role that you're going to play in the days to come to offer advice based on experience, to encourage, to support. And so now, having exchanged your vows, having sealed your vows with the rings, Matt and Rachel, you have come today willingly to enter into the sacred covenant of marriage with one another. And now, by the authority granted to me, by the Commonwealth of Kentucky, and more importantly, by our Lord Jesus Christ himself, it is my honor and my great joy to pronounce you husband and wife. Matt, kiss your boy. <laughs> Husband and wife, Matt and Rachel King. 